Hello everyone. In today's session, we have to start new chapter from the syllabus of 11th standard, and it is chapter number six, mechanical properties of solid. Initially, let me learn some basic concept which help us to learn this chapter. So, basic concept in basic terms. First one is deformation. What is deformation? Deformation means change in size and shape of body is called as deformation or in short change in dimension. Dimension may be length, volume, etc. So when we consider an example of sponge, when we apply a force, then its size shape changes. It is called as deformation. We can say that sponge is deformed. Now here deforming force, deforming force, the force which produces change in dimension or the force which produces deformation is the deforming force. Now here basic, here in this chapter we have to learn mechanical properties of solid, everything is related to this mechanical properties, basically based, mechanic, based on the mechanical properties. This, these substances are classified under three categories. Means substances under uh, classified under three basic properties. The first property is elasticity. Means some substance may be elastic, so they have elasticity property. Second property is plasticity. Some substance may be a plastic in nature, so they follow the plasticity property and some substance are not coming under elasticity and plasticity they are following the rigidity they are the rigid now what exactly mean by elasticity that we covered so in 10th standard or in previous standard you already learn what exactly mean by the elasticity elasticity is the property of substance due to which it regain its original size and shape after removing deforming force. For example, when we apply force to a sponge, its size shape changes. But as we remove the force, what happens? The sponge is coming to its original size and shape. After removing the force, after removing deforming force, that property of the sponge is called as elasticity. Now another thing is, we consider example of spring, rubber, when we stretch it, the length changes. When we remove the force, again they get original length. That property is the elasticity. Now here, you know that what exactly mean by the elasticity now. And the, prop, the body which follow the elasticity property is called as elastic body. Now the, my question is, so you know the rubber as well as steel, which one is the more elastic? Rubber or steel, which one is more elastic? This is the question. Some student may say that sir, rubber is more elastic, but remember one thing, the elasticity of steel is more, steel having a highest elasticity and because of that, we use steel in the construction of bridges, building, etc. Now, the question may be how the steel having highest elasticity, the answer we get in this chapter, so that we have to learn later. Now, after the elasticity, next one is plasticity. Plasticity, plastic bodies, let I tell you the example of plastic bodies. Clay, wax, mud, these are the example of plastic body. Simple example, if you apply a force to wax, size shape changes. Then as you remove the force, then size shape maintain as it is. Means the change in elastic body is permanent. And here in elastic body, it is a temporary change. So plasticity means, so it is a property of body due to which it does not regain its original size and shape after removing deforming force. That property is plasticity. And the body which follow this property is called as plastic body. And the next one is rigidity. Now stone is a rigid body, stone is an example of rigid body. Now what is rigidity? Now rigidity means, let I tell you example of stone first. If you take a stone and if you apply force, what happens? Size shape changes? No. 
stone is a rigid it does not change its size and shape but if we apply larger force then also it does not change a size and shape but if we apply more larger at one point it break but it does not change its size and shape that property is the rigidity means the property of body due to which body does not change its size and shape if larger force apply it break that property is the rigidity now here if someone asks write down distinguish between elastic body and plastic body or elasticity or plasticity elastic body means the body which shows elasticity property is elastic body we can write corresponding point the body which shows plasticity property is plastic body now after that next one second one so in elastic body change is temporary and here change is permanent that we already discussed with the example now here in elastic body some internal restoring force is developed why the body again regain its original size and shape because as we apply a force inside the body some force is developed and because of that force body restore its original size and shape that force is called as internal restoring force and that internal restoring force is developed in this elastic body so it is here internal restoring force is developed and here internal restoring force not developed now the fourth point we can write example elastic body is steel rubber etc plastic body we can write mud rubber wax clay etc so these are the distinguish point for this now after this uh, basic properties we have to start a new article which help us to learn this concept related to this properties elasticity and the first concept is stress now what is stress so here yeah, what exactly mean by stress now here yeah, stress is the force develop inside internal restoring force develop in a body per unit area cross sectional area so i can write here internal restoring force per unit cross sectional area this is called as stress means if i consider example of sponge if this is a sponge when we apply a force then size and shape changes it it size and shape changes then how much force is develop in this unit area internal force that internal force develop internal restoring force develop in this unit area is the stress now here basically this force is develop inside the body how we calculate this force if you want to calculate the stress develop in a body how you calculate basically if i consider example of sponge example of spring then the internal restoring force develop in these bodies or in all bodies is nearly equal to is equal to we can say applied force if i consider spring if we apply smaller force and release it spring goes slowly if we uh, strike the spring with the uh, larger force and release it it goes fastly means larger the force you apply to the is body larger the internal force internal restoring force developed so here internal restoring force is equal to the applied force so instead of internal restoring force i can write applied force and this cross sectional area of that body so i can write internal applied force f and cross sectional area a so we get a formula of stress f by so this is a formula of stress now here we can write its si unit force unit is newton area is meter square so unit is newton per meter square in previous standard you already learned a concept pressure so pressure is also force per unit area now what is the difference between stress and pressure now they are same or they are different that we have to discuss here 
Now, obviously, if they are they are not same, because if they are same, then why we given name two names? Okay. So they are different. Now, what is the difference? You remember one thing is one thing here. Stress is always means pressure. We discuss pressure first. Pressure is normal to the surface. If I consider this is a balloon. So here the pressure is always normal to the surface or the force per unit area. So it is normal to the surface. But stress may be a normal or maybe a tangential. So when the stress is normal to the surface, that stress we can call it as a pressure that you remember. When the stress is normal to the surface, we can call this stress as a pressure. Now here this is a unit Newton per meter square or you can use equivalent unit Pascal. Pascal is a unit of pressure, but here Newton per meter square is equivalent to the Pascal, but generally we are not using Pascal in this chapter, but you remember these are the equivalent units. CGS unit if you want to write, it is dyne per centimeter square. Dimension, we write dimension also. Dimension of stress. Dimension of force is L1 M1 T minus 2 and divided by dimension of area is L2. Now after solving this L1 means 1 minus 2 is minus 1. L raised to minus 1 M1 T minus 2. T minus 2. So this is the dimension of stress. You remember this dimension. Now after that we have to cover the types of stress. I hope everyone understood what is stress, the formula, you need dimension, then after that we have to cover types of the stress. Basically, stress is classified into three types based on the deformation. Basically, deformation means change in, uh, deformation means change in size and shape. Basically, if the body changes its length, then that stress is called as longitudinal stress. If body changes its volume, then that stress is called as volume stress. And if body changes its shape, then that stress is called as shearing stress. So first we are uh, learn, we learn the stress related to the change in length and it is longitudinal stress. So first type is longitudinal stress. It is also called as tensile stress. Tensile stress. So the word longitudinal or tensile means you remember here it is related to the change in length. Okay. So here the definition you can write or in single line you can write. When body is subjected to change in length then the stress developed in a body is called as longitudinal stress. So let I tell you one example where body is subjected to change in length. I consider wire. So this is wire whose length is L. And we apply weight and its length changes by small l. You can see in a diagram. Original length capital L, change in length small l. Take it. Then here stress developed in this wire is the longitudinal stress. So we can write formula here. So longitudinal stress, longitudinal stress is equal to F by A. So here force we have applied in the form of weight. So weight is mg. So I can write this longitudinal stress formula mg divided by cross sectional area of wire. So cross sectional area of the wire means if this is the wire and if we cut the wire like this, the area we observe here is the cross sectional area. So this area is the circular area. And if wire having a radius small r, then the cross sectional area is pi r square because the area of the circle is pi r square. So here pi r square. So longitudinal stress we get mg divided by pi r square that you remember. Now the second one is volume stress. When body is subjected to change in volume, then Stress developed in a body is called as volume stress. I consider here this is a balloon 
whose volume is or any uh, uh, object i consider balloon whose or football whose volume original volume is v now we apply some force normal force here and we reduce its volume uniform force we apply and we reduce its volume by dv now the volume is v minus dv then we can write volume stress is equal to f by a here this force is normal to the surface so i told you here so when the force is normal to the surface then that uh, force per unit area is called as pressure so here this volume stress is also equal to the change in pressure i can write it as a change in pressure so i can use word dp here for change in pressure so here we have written two types longitudinal stress volume stress now after that the third type we have to cover and it is related to the shape and it is related to shape third one it is called as shearing stress the word shear means shape and the stress related to the shape is shearing stress now see here when body is subjected to change in shape listen here when body is subjected to change in shape then stress develop in a body is called as shearing stress that you remember here now here i can consider so this is a body this is a cube and the lower portion is fixed i can name it a b c d and if we apply a tangential force f to this then this upper surface is displaced with some lateral displacement x uh, to new position a dash b dash i consider the distance of upper layer from the fixed layer is h i consider this angle is theta you can see here when we apply some tangential force the shape of the body a b c d changes to new shape a dash b dash c d so in this case change in shape is observed so this stress is called as shearing stress and the formula is shearing stress is equal to this tangential force per unit area is the shearing stress i hope everyone understood this shearing stress now after that the types of the stress we have to cover one more concept one more terminology similar to this one and it is strain so next concept strain now what is strain you remember one thing is here strain means let i tell you the formula here strain is ratio of two things here change in dimension divided by original dimension change in dimension divided by original dimension this is strain now here change in dimension means dimension may be related to length volume shape anything the ratio of change in dimension to original dimension is called as strain now it is a ratio of two same things so no unit no dimension it is pure number so it is pure number now after that we have to cover types of this uh, types of this strain so i write it here types of strain strain having again similar types to the stress the first one is the strain related to change in length longitudinal strain strain related to change in volume long uh, volume strain strain related to change in shape shearing strain instead of stress we have to use the word strain now here i am removing the word stress by strain the first type is longitudinal strain now what is longitudinal strain so longitudinal strain is it is related to change in length obviously so this dimension word we have to replace by length so here it is a ratio of two things change in length 
डिवाइडेड बाय ओरिजिनल लेंथ चेंज इन लेंथ डिवाइडेड बाय ओरिजिनल लेंथ इज लॉन्जिट्यूडनल स्ट्रेंथ नाउ हाउ मच इज द चेंज इन लेंथ हियर स्मॉल एल इज द चेंज इन लेंथ एंड ओरिजिनल लेंथ इज कैपिटल एल सो वी गेट दिस फॉर्मूला चेंज इन लेंथ बाय ओरिजिनल लेंथ सिमिलर मैनर हियर वॉल्यूम स्ट्रेंथ सेकंड टाइप इज रिलेटेड टू चेंज इन वॉल्यूम सो हियर सो वॉल्यूम स्ट्रेंथ Change in volume divided by original volume. I can write a formula here. Change in volume divided by original volume. <coughs> original volume. Now, how much is the volume is change here? dV and original volume is v. So this formula is dV by v. Third one is related to the shape and it is shearing strain. So here I consider this example. so we can write change in shape divided by original shape is shearing strain but here in physics we consider only physical quantities means the quantities which we can measure shape we cannot measure so we cannot measure shape we can compare the shape of two now here so this change in shape upon original shape is the right definition but here we are not writing in that way because by that formula we are unable to find out shearing strain so i can write here shearing strain is equal to lateral displacement of any layer lateral displacement of any layer divided by its distance from fixed layer lateral displacement of any layer divided by its distance from fixed layer ratio of these two is the shearing strain now how much is the lateral displacement here see here initially this is a ab is the upper face then after applying tangential force the it displaces with x so this x is the lateral displacement divided by distance from fixed layer this cd layer is a fixed layer and upper layer having a distance from this fixed layer is h so x by h is a shearing strain so this is x by h now x if i consider this is theta then x is opposite side and h is a adjacent side opposite side upon adjacent side is tan of this theta you can write this x by h as a tan theta but here if i consider it is a metal then if we apply tangential force then this theta is very small not larger So tan theta is nearly equal to theta. Theta. So I can write or nearly equal to sine. I can write if theta is small. I hope everyone understood these types of strength.